I'm going to talk to you about water and cities today. And I know it's, you think, oh goodness, this is going to be boring. But just give me a moment to reflect on how water impacts on our life without us seemingly being aware of it and how it can actually improve the whole way that our cities can be much more resilient to, to an uncertain future. All of us will remember that in the mid-1990s, there was a, we were in the land of plenty. There was plenty of water. Uh, gardens were green. And then the drought hit us. And really, by 1990, from 1997 to 2008, almost every major reservoir in our cities were dry. Major concerns throughout all our capital cities. Drought restrictions were on. Uh, and the whole social awareness of, of the scarcity of water was, was right before us. Many governments were in panic. They were building desalination plants in almost every coastal cities in, in Australia. And just as the desalination plants were near completion, what do we get? The drought broke. But the drought broke with a vengeance. As you can see, just in the month of January 2011, there were floods in Melbourne, there were floods in Brisbane. Significant heat wave in Sydney, never felt before. Bushfires in Perth. And what that highlights to us is in fact that our cities and the community in our cities are increasingly vulnerable to climatic extremes. And the debate goes on as to whether that's climate change or just natural variability. To some degree, it's a bit of both. But it didn't matter. The fact is that our cities are growing to become more and more vulnerable to those climate extremes. And I want to talk about how we can actually start to think about water management in cities and how we can create, through good water management in cities, a city that's more resilient, a city that can deliver better water security, but also a city, a city that can mitigate against future urban heat. Because there's one thing that is sure and the signs are in for that, is that in many of our Australian cities, there will be more future heat wave days, and there will be more consecutive days of heat wave conditions. And the way we manage water in the cities, the way we green our cities, the way we put water in the landscape will mitigate a lot of that. Just this year, in the first 90 days in this year, Australia broke 123 climatic records, whether it is about heat or whether it is about rainfall or floods. And we really need to appreciate that it wasn't that long ago that we were in the depth of drought, and now we're wondering what to do with all this water that is running off our city. So I want to talk about a vision for our future, a vision for what future cities ought to look like in terms of its water management. First thing is about water security. Yes, we've built our desalination plant. What does that do? It actually moves our dependency on rain for water to our dependency on energy for water. Because desalination plants are incredibly energy intensive. But do you know that our cities are in fact water supply catchments? If you look at the water balance in our cities, you will realize that, in fact, the combined amount of storm water that runs off from our cities, plus the wastewater, this is the sewage water that runs our city, are, in fact, more than the water that our cities consume. And then you wonder, why aren't we making use of that resource in our city? Why aren't we starting to think about reusing our wastewater to flush toilets. Why do we have to have drinking water to flush our toilets? Why don't we think about the storm water that runs off our catchments to be used for non-drinking purposes? A very important point that we mustn't forget is that even during the depth of the drought, it's not as if it didn't rain in our cities. It's just that when it did rain, nothing ran off our catchments into the dams. And why is that the case? Because the earth is warming, the catchments are getting drier, and therefore you needed more rain to wet the catchments before you get water into our dam. 
but you don't have to worry about that in a city. When it rains, it falls onto our roof, onto our road, it runs off. And we are not harvesting that resource at the moment. So the vision that we have for future is that we really need to think about fit-for-purpose water sources, that we would harvest and utilize water for different uses, and that we should not be using drinking water to wash our cars, to water our lawn, or to flush the toilets, and that we as a community should start to think about living with two taps coming into our house, a drinking water tap and a non-drinking water tap. And the water source for the non-drinking water tap could be any combination of wastewater, grey water, storm water. The other important issue that we need to think about is that the, what is in our wastewater are significant resources that we now need to think about recovering. It's not just the water, but there's energy in our wastewater systems because we all like our warm showers and there's energy in there. There's also nutrients in our waste and we need to start to think about wastewater treatment plants being future resource recovery plants. The world is running out of nutrients. But what about our cities as providing ecosystem services? And one of the key things about ecosystem services is the whole notion of ecological landscapes. We talk about the fact that we're living in a desert. We heard the, the video before about food production, but I'd like to bring to you that it's time that we think about bringing nature back into our cities. Ecological landscapes is about mimicking the functions of forests and wetlands and open spaces to service our city, to cleanse our city. Systems such as medium strips on road that ought to be, in fact, places where water runs into, storm water that is, runs into, filters that water for the protection of the natural environment. How many urban creeks do we see are deteriorating because of the fact that it is within an urban environment? And what is the cause of that deterioration? Water quality is one of them. And why is it that we are not building our medium strips on a road as a depression for water to get into, rather than as a mount for water to run off. Why can't we be building wetlands within our cities such that they provide a much stronger biodiversity ecosystem services in terms of cleansing water, in terms of a fantastic place for us to create a sense of community and sense of place in? Why are we not thinking about building systems like that throughout our cities whereby all green spaces do have function beyond it being a green space, beyond it looking good. Why can't we start to think about our buildings and the facades of our buildings continue to provide the green ecological landscapes, vertical landscapes? The outcomes are cleaner water environment, healthy waterways for our cities. But more than that, we now have docu documented proof that all this green infrastructure create a cooling effect in our cities for a number of reasons. Maintaining water in the landscape, maintaining a means of shading, providing a means of dissipating the radiant energy that comes from a hot day and preventing that from being stored in our building that creates what we refer to as the urban heat island effect. Why can't we start to think about creating them as beautiful and activated space for our community? And what happens if we, in fact, link all those green spaces together? We create ecological corridors. And when we cre create ecological corridors that are green and blue, we are starting to think about how we deal with flooding. And that flood waters that runs off our cities do not need to run through our roads and through our houses, but in fact through a network of green and blue corridors. And this will increase the urban biodiversity into our cities, and it will also start to think about why couldn't those green corridors in fact be productive landscapes, community gardens, orchards. And so I'd like to present to you a vision of future cities which is supported by the way we manage water, the way the water can be used to support the greening of our cities, create a vision where we can all work together in creating our future water-sensitive city. And that vision 
captures all those functions that we talk about. And the best way to describe them is through this video. Where we manage water in our cities for livability, looking at fit for purpose sources, flood protection, recovering water, energy and nutrients, healthy waterways. And how do we create a water sensitive city? You create it by building water sensitive precincts such as what is shown in this animation. Whereby if you look at future development within our cities, we will see, for instance, that a wetland is very much part of the public realm in our cities. That a green wall that influences the microclimate is also used to filter grey water. The grey water supports the green wall, the filtered water can then be reused for toilet flushing within the building. That drainage is not a pipe under the ground, but drainage is part of the landscape that influences the biodiversity, improves the microclimate within our precincts. Where they become common places for people to gather, a refuge for the community that influences the microclimate during heat wave conditions, but are also beautiful and place pieces of water art. and biofilters throughout that filters the storm water that runs off the catchments such that it can be used as a resource. Trees, very important in our urban landscapes for mitigating our climate. Why can't our landscape be productive landscapes such as urban orchards that are part of our development? Why can't we start to think about the water energy nexus whereby local production of energy provides the heat that we can use to generate hot water. And that hot water can be reticulated to the building at no further additional need for energy input. Why could we not link wastewater treatment plant with productive landscape as the most efficient way of recovering the nutrients? And if we develop our precincts this way, over time, each city will undergo renewal. You'll find that with the fullness of time, our cities will evolve to be a water-sensitive city. And this is, in fact, the work that we're doing at the CRC for water-sensitive city. And what I've described to you is the vision that we have in terms of what water-sensitive city is about. It is about looking at functional urban landscapes whether it is about a wetland or a green wall. And we all know that in some of our climates, green walls and green roofs are notoriously difficult to maintain because we have long, dry summers. But by maintaining it using grey water generated by a building and using the green wall to filter any excess water such that that water can then be reused for toilet flushing is the beginning of how we can actually start to think about building architecture, water management, greening of our cities to come together. The notions of drainage as part of our waterways that starts to bring the blue corridor into our cities and the biodiversity that brings with it are examples of how it doesn't have to look like a grubby creek. It can be places of beautiful landscapes but still functional ecologically as well as in terms of providing the ecosystem services that we're looking for from a climate, perspective, climate management perspective. Rain gardens are dotted throughout our cities as kidneys of our city that filters the stormwater that carries all the urban pollution every time it rains, filters that such that that water, whether we choose to reuse the stormwater or not, that water is cleansed for the protection of the environment and that relationship, and this ties in so well with the previous video that we saw about the notion of connecting urban productive landscape with the water management in our cities. The whole notion of community gardens, urban orchards, as a means of bringing a better sense of community connection to food production, a better connection between the community and the importance and the scarcity of food and water if 
if we get that connection right, we will then be able to address a lot of the food shortage crisis because research has in fact shown that nearly 50% of the world food production is in fact wasted by wastage. We either order too much or we find that the, we order inappropriately. We buy food that is out of season that required to be transported and the process of transport actually leads to a significant amount of wastage. And that's because the community has lost their connection with the whole issue of food. And it's the same with water. So I put it to you that there is a, a, a good future for us in our cities. Urban water management is fundamental to how future cities could be developed, but it does require cooperation. As you realize, the provision of water security is not the only thing that matters in water management in our cities. But water engineers now need to work with city planners, architects, microclimate uh, specialists, building architects, landscape architects, to basically start to create a space that we want to live in, but a space that actually functions as a living organism, that functions as a piece of ecological landscapes that deliver ecosystem services to both the built environment and the natural environment. And that's the vision. And 2013 is the United Nations International Year of Water Cooperation, and cooperation is what we need. Between agencies, and also for all of you to ask for a different solution from the traditional solution, to ask for waterways not to be put in concrete channels and pipes, but in fact to be brought up to the surface so that we can celebrate the water, so that that water can be used to support a much stronger ecology within our cities. This is what we think the future water sensitive city should look like. Thank you very much. Thank you.